was at a party a while back and I overheard two people talking about me behind my back and just like full disclosure as a bit of a narcissist, that might as well have been my teeth falling out because that was a literal dream come true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you're doing like a, you're doing like a fake laugh because it was a bad, okay, cool. The problem was that I froze, like their gossiping was some sort of a T-Rex, and if I didn't move, the gossiposaurus wouldn't see me. And then they'd be like, hey, what are you doing listening in on us talking about you behind your back? Like I would somehow be in trouble by it. So I'm standing there and I realize that they're like having an argument about me. About what you ask? My knowledge of Greek mythology? No, thank God. Maybe they were arguing about my hair and whether I use a blow dryer when I get out of the shower. The answer, spoiler alert, is yes. Volume doesn't just happen. Or maybe your guess is, Elliot, were they arguing about whether you have a lot of really good crock pot recipes? <laughs> I'll never tell. They were debating my sexual orientation. I have a tendency to, when I'm in any kind of like awkward public situation, to kind of blow the roof off the whole thing. It's like the social equivalent of being at a restaurant and realizing that your water glass is chipped. So rather than just like asking for a new glass, you flip the whole table over. So I melodramatically walk up to them and I go, what are you guys talking about? And they were cool about it. They were like, oh, we were talking about whether or not you're gay. And I was like, oh, well, what, what, what did you decide? Quick note, uh, both of these people were attractive females, which is kind of the only type of person I still really care about thinking I'm gay, because in life, they're kind of my target demo. And this girl says, I think you're straight, but she says you're definitely gay. And then the girl without missing a beat just goes, oh, you're definitely gay. <laughs> Here's a trend I've noticed over the past 29 years. When someone thinks I'm straight, they think I'm straight. They have uh, uh, taken into account all of the observable data, and from that, they've made a hypothesis. They don't know I'm straight, they think I'm straight, maybe I'm not, but that's what they think. But when someone thinks I'm gay, oh, they, they know I'm gay. Like, lock, stock, and gay barrel. Like, he is gay, he's gay, wrap, wrap him up in a, uh, put a rainbow on it, because he's gay. He just doesn't act or dress how I do. He's different, must be gay, because that makes sense in my, he's gay. The use of a Southern accent is in no way meant to stereotype all Southern people who are oftentimes more accepting than other people, say girls at Hollywood parties. People have known I'm gay my entire life, and the reality that I'm not is like trying to stick a CD into a cassette play. The technology just isn't there. I remember when uh, SourceFed was first starting, and I was told by the producer to act less gay, and I was like, oh yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. The only people that were really pissed about it were Joe Beretta and Lee Newton, who were like, uh, go F yourself, Elliot needs to be who he is. But I didn't think anything of it because all my life the cassette players of the world have decided my sexual orientation for me. They have taken me and fit me into their paradigm and the producer didn't want that to happen. So I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Because despite my fabulous hair and my dope ass sneakers, there's still sometimes this little kid inside of me who's like, no I'm not, you're gay. And then there's a whole group of people who are like, who cares, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm not talking about the morality of being gay. That totally matters to some people, and I get it, but I truly can't imagine a more boring conversation. The only conversation I can think of that's more boring than is it wrong to be gay is the conversation of like, do you think they're gonna monetize Facebook videos soon? <laughs> what bothers me is taking someone and then morphing them into anything, good or bad, just to make you more comfortable, just so somebody makes sense to you. So I'm standing there with these girls and I'm like, no, no, I'm straight. And I said it like that, like I was all disappointed in it and I hated that about myself. For the longest time I was like, why didn't I be more aggressive? Why wasn't I more defensive? Why wasn't I at least proud of my straightness? And I think the reason is because I knew the moment I said that, besides the fact that she was losing the debate, she also was going to be confused. The reality of the world was not going to match with the story that she had written. And that's uncomfortable for people. Or she was just gonna not believe me. She was gonna dismiss me. She was gonna cling to what she already thought all along. And what I had to offer wouldn't matter. Either way, my being straight was going to cause either discomfort or dismissal. And she was really like hot. Like she was an attractive girl. And I don't know a lot about flirting, but I don't think that there are a lot of rap lyrics about altering a bitch's paradigm. Have you ever felt misunderstood or miscategorized about anything throughout your entire life? Have you ever altered your behavior in order to not be perceived a certain way? Do you not feel comfortable divulging incredibly personal stories in the YouTube comments? You know what? That's fair. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'd say actually I'm making generalizations and evolutionary adaptation in order to keep away from danger, to which I might say, hold on, are you saying that my comments on too many